Okay, so welcome to this conversation about where is your energy escaping through the lens of human design. So let's just begin with energy escaping can often show up in numerous different ways. You might be feeling tired all of the time or by particular things. You might be feeling completely uninspired by your job or by a conversation or by a person. There could be people that feel like they are draining your energy, that you can recognize people in your life that aren't giving and are just taking. This is how you might describe it. You might be feeling fatigued and feeling like those people are energy vampires or the situations that you're in are energy vampires. And it can feel like you are in the wrong place and just feeling completely out of alignment. And this is just to confirm to you that it's not meant to feel like this. Um, when you are in your correct alignment, things feel very different. So looking at this through a human design lens and taking responsibility for this, I'm just gonna say a statement to you and I want you to really hear this. I'll read it twice. But everyone has access to all of the energy they need for the things they are here to do. I'll read that again. Everyone has access to all of the energy they need for the things they are here to do. It's not a joke by the universe to put you on planet Earth with a mission or a purpose or to enjoy the things that you enjoy to do and you not have the energy for it. So you will have the energy for the things which you are here for. There are nuances to this, though, and that's what we're going to explore within this call. Now, so many of us don't have the energy available for the things that we are doing in life because we are trying to live up to societal expectations or expectations of others. We're essentially trying to live a life that isn't ours to live in the first place. These things that we're doing, these tasks that we're doing, the jobs that we're in, why are we in them in the first place? That's a real key question for you. And there are other reasons why you might not have the energy for these things that you are here to do. So we're going to look into that. But it all comes down to you will have the energy available for the things which you are here to do. Now, part of this is also about balancing energy. So it's not just about saying you can only do the things that are fun and enjoyable. There are things in life that we have to do, but it's about balancing it. It's about bringing the things that we have passions for, the things that we are here for, the things that we do have the energy for into the majority of our life and moving the things that we don't have the energy for into the kind of minority of our life. Now, some of the permissions I wanna give you from this is that you won't have energy for all people, all situations and all things, okay? And that can get really specific. When we look at a situation, say for example, I hear this a lot, um, this person's really draining or this job is really draining. It's about getting really specific with that because that person might be completely fine in your life. They might be completely aligned to what you're there for. However, it might be that a specific task within the job isn't serving you, isn't something you have the energy for, and it'd be better if it was off of your plate. It might be that the person that is in, in alignment with your life and is in your life and they're meant to be there, it might be that they are talking about a subject that just does not interest you in the slightest. So get really specific with this, but the permission here is that you won't have the energy for all people, all situations and all things. The next permission is that you will have energy for different things than someone else has the energy for. You will not be able to be the same person as someone else. Just because they have the energy doesn't mean that you will. And the next permission is that you will have different amounts of energy from other people. You can't expect it to be the same. Now, it's likely you already know the things that you have the energy for, and you already know the things that you don't have the energy for. That usually isn't the issue with how your energy escapes. The issue is usually around, we can't help but do the things that are draining the energy in our life. We can't understand what's wrong with us for not being able to do these things or why they're draining energy from us in the first place. So it's not that we can't identify them. It's that there is a story around it, meaning we're still doing them and we don't understand why we can't do them. Now, an example of this is I 
within uh, within my family within my friends I operate with a very different energy level I'm a mental projector and I don't have the same energy levels as people in my life but for the majority of my life I've tried to keep up keep up keep up and blamed myself and my energy for not being able to keep up and some of the permissions that I've received from human design are things that say you won't be able to do those same things because you're here to do different things and your energy works very very differently so that's what we're going to try and identify within this and within one-on-one -on -one sessions that's where we can really look at what you have the energy for and what you don't have the energy for so like I was alluding to there is always a narrative or a reason stopping you from not carrying on doing that task so when you know that you're not here to do that thing there is always a reason that's stopping you from not doing that for example that could be my family are relying on me to do this or well it's my job and I need to make money whatever the reason is there is always a reason the same way there's an always a reason as to why you aren't doing the thing which you do have the energy for your passion why you're not following your passion it could be well it's my part-time thing and there's always a reason so an exercise I'd like you to do and we'll continue speaking through this but if you're watching on the replay just pause it for a moment after this task is I want you to make a list of all the things which are taking energy away from you okay I want to draw awareness to those places you might already know about them but I really want to pull it into awareness so I want you to start making that list I want you to write down those things or if you can't write down right now, just really think about those things and draw your attention to the things that are taking energy away from you, where your energy is escaping, those situations, those people, those conversations. Now, to get more human design specific, if you do know your energy type, if you're a generator, I want you to make a list of the things that are causing you frustration, things where it feels like there's a block and there's, it's just frustrating. It's not flowing. Make a list of all those things. If you're a manifester, I want you to make a list of all the things that are causing you to feel anger. Like things are not flowing and it's causing me to feel angry about it. If you're a projector, I want you to make a list of all the things that are giving you this sense of bitterness. It's not going this way. People aren't recognizing me, whether it's a job, a situation, a conversation. Write down the things that are causing you bitterness. And if you're a reflector, I want you to write down all the things that are causing you to feel disappointed. Where are you feeling disappointed? What about? Now, also outside of this, also coming from the human design knowledge, if we're living by default and not by our design, we can end up just falling into doing tasks which aren't necessarily for us. Or we can carry on doing tasks which is society, societally normal but actually not serving us. So some of the ways that your energy could be escaping is while you're relaxing, you might be sitting there scrolling on social media or sitting watching TV, whatever it is, and just flowing with what society says is your normal for recharging. And actually by doing on social media or by doing, by walking around, you're actually using energy. That could also be, you know, you could recharge by going and having um, a nice meal with your friend. But for you and your specific design, that's just releasing more energy when actually you recharge by sitting in your own space. So think about how you're living by default and not by your design. Now, why are you still in those situations that your energy is escaping, where you feel like your energy has been taken from you? Well, here is where the mind talk comes in. And these kind of ideas around energy vampires is something I really wanted to, to touch on as well. Why are you surrounded by energy vampires? What's your mind telling you? These situations, people, what are your reasons for this? So first of all, the list that you were just making, pause the video again and write down the reasons for those things. Really get specific. Why are those things still in your life? Why are you still allowing yourself to do those things? Is it because it's paying my bills? Is it because they're a member of my family? Whatever the reasons are, get specific and write the reasons next to them. Okay. Now, with regards to energy vampires, I said I was going to touch upon this, where your energy is escaping to. I want to reframe this. People see energy vampires as people who are just taking, taking, taking 
energy away from you. However, energy vampires, I want to reframe this, they aren't necessarily taking your energy away from you. There's very few things that can really take from you, but you are allowing yourself to be there. And when you're in the energetic space or when you're communicating with them, the energy isn't necessarily compatible with yours sometimes. A certain conversation or a specific task might not be compatible with yours and you're not able to generate the energy while you're in that situation. So while they aren't taking from you this idea of energy vampires, you are allowing your energy to degenerate within that situation. It's not compatible of that situation or person. So instead of blaming that person for burning your life, it's now looking at why your thoughts are telling you to be with them in their surroundings. And this is where human design is interesting. It looks into the not self mind. It looks into how the mind tells you to make decisions. Now, within all of your charts, if you have your chart with you, or if you've seen a human design chart, you'll see that there are nine centers and there are nine themes within those centers about how your mind will talk to you to take you off track, to allow your energy to escape, to stop your alignment taking place. So to go through those nine themes very briefly, the head center is all about thinking about things that do not matter. So in your not self, in when you allow your mind to kind of talk and take control, your head center is thinking about all of these things that do not matter. What if this happens? What if that happens? What will they think of me? It's thinking about all the things that do not matter. When you go down another center to the Ajna or the mind, this is the thematic of trying to prove or trying to pretend that you are certain. So it's having an opinion about something always, always trying to find the answer, always trying to have the idea, it's pretending to be certain. Now, if the center is open or white in your chart, it's really gonna play out like this. If you've got the center colored in, not so much, but we'll look into the nuances. The next center, the throat center, this is the thematic of trying to be seen. So you might find yourself speaking over the top of people or feeling like you have to fill silences. And it's just doing, 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 trying to be seen, trying to att attract attention. It's how your mind could be taking your track or a reason why you're in a situation. I'm going there because if I go there, I'll be seen. The G center, the diamond in the middle is preoccupied with ideas about direction, love and purpose. It's preoccupied with working out your next step. So you might be in something because, well, I'm here because it will lead to me finding love or it will lead to me finding my direction or it will lead to me finding my purpose. That's why I'm in this job. That's why I'm going on this night out. That's why I'm seeing my friend because my mind is telling me if I go here, I will find love, I will find purpose, I will find direction. The ego center, the tiny triangle in your chart is the thematic here is trying to prove yourself to yourself and trying to prove yourself to others that you are worthy of whatever it is. There's a lot of conditional statements here. So your energy might be escaping because your mind is saying, well, for me to be worthy, I've got to go and do this course. Or for me to be worthy of this friend, I better go out and buy a new outfit or I better turn up at this networking event. It's trying to prove yourself to yourself and others. The splenic center, the triangle on the left-hand side with the bottom of your chart is about holding onto things so tightly that you don't want to let go of them when actually you should be letting go of them. So you might know that you're in a situation that is not good for you or meant for you. Your energy is escaping and leaving you, but your mind is saying, but you, we've got to hold on more tightly. We can't let this go. I won't be safe if this person leaves me. This person makes me feel good. They make me feel like I've got a safety blanket. This job makes me feel like I'm safe. This is where the mind can come from. The emotions, the triangle on the right-hand side towards the of your chart is about avoiding conversations which need to be had. So it's avoiding conflict and it's people-pleasing. So one of the reasons you could be having your energy escape is because you're doing things that you think people want you to do people pleasing or avoiding conversations which if you had them it would solve the problem okay the sacral center the red square at the 
towards the bottom of your chart is about trying to be productive and not knowing when enough is enough. So if you have this center and it's red, it's colored in, this is you being having all of this energy within your chart and going, I've got this energy, I've got this energy. But your energy can escape by because you're just doing things for the sake of doing and not waiting. So you just do, 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 do. And you don't know when enough is enough. So your energy can escape. And finally, the ninth thematic here is that root center, which is all about moving quickly under pressure. It's the triangle, um, it's the square at the bottom of your chart, moving quickly under pressure. So your mind might be saying, well, I can't stop and think about this, or I have this deadline. I've just got to get the task done. So I'm not going to not do it. I'm just going to get the task done quickly, as quickly as I can. So when we look back up at your list that you were making or the list that you were thinking about, the questions are things like, well, are you not letting go of that person because you're afraid of letting them down? Are you still with that person or still helping that person out because you don't want to let go of them? Are you in that job because you think it will lead to your success? Do you overexert yourself because you're trying to be the perfect mum, dad, boss, sister, whatever the label is? Are you overexerting yourself doing all this stuff because you're trying to be that perfect person? Are you taking six courses at the same time and not wanting to not be in the courses because you think it will make you worthy of a pay rise or because it will make you worthy of your clients in the future? Are you speaking all the time and trying to fill all the silences and trying to get your thoughts across because you think that people will think you silly if you don't know the answer? So there's all of these thematics within your reasons, but all of these reasons are the things that are making your energy escape. None of these reasons are helping you with your alignment. None of them. They are all ways that your energy is escaping. So I want you to be curious here with the narratives that you already have, the narratives that you've pulled into your awareness. And I wonder if you can rewrite these narratives. Can you argue the other side of those narratives? So, for example, if you are in a job that you don't like and you get really specific about that and your specific reason is because you've got to do this task and it takes up the majority of your day. And you say, the reason why I'm constantly doing this is because it pays my bills or because my boss won't give that to anyone else or anything like this. Could you argue that a different way and say, well, maybe I could have a conversation with my boss and say, this is the thing that's making my energy escape or whatever words you'd like to use and see if that conversation can be had to change the task that you're doing. So see what narratives are keeping you back and whether you can rewrite them and if there's a solution another way around. Okay. So why does it feel like your energy has been forcibly taken? And that's because you're putting yourself in situations which are not compatible with what your energy is here to do. You aren't setting those boundaries around what your energy is here for. And rewriting those narratives and being aware of your narratives will start that change to putting those boundaries in place. Now, if you really want to surrender with the mind and learn about your specific conversation that happens in your mind, it's about looking into your chart. There's only so much we can do in a general conversation like this. But what is the best way to do to surrender to your mind is to learn about your authority and your strategy. And that's within your chart. And that's how we take the power away from the mind. So how do we turn us around? Let's get a little bit specific with human design in terms of energy types. Now, human design is known as a science of differentiation. So it's literally here to show you how different you are than anyone else, how unique you are. We're all designed to be different. We do not have the same energy as anyone else. And we are not here to do the same things as anyone else. We're not here to just follow the flow of what society tells us to or to follow the advice of our friends and family because they have completely different levels of energy than ourselves. Now, interestingly, we actually all start with different 
amounts of energy too, depending on what your energy type is. So if you're a generator, which is the majority of the world, you do have access to consistent energy. So if you're looking at your chart and you're a generator, or you know you're a generator already, you do have consistent energy and you do recharge overnight, but your energy is only available for certain things. It's a bit like having your own petrol station or your own gas station, fuel station, and that will only fuel the correct cars or the correct activity. So for you, it's about aligning with the tasks and the people and the conversations which you have the energy for. You are here to be productive. You are here to build things. You are here to be creative, but it's not about forcing that creativity. It's about saying yes to the things that you have like a hell yeah, like this is my passion. This is what I want to do. It's about bringing that into the majority of your day. You will always have consistent energy available for the things that you love in the proportion that you're meant to. You're still here to rest, but there is consistent energy available for the things that you're here for. So the question for you is, do I have the energy for this? And something you can do straight after this is to make a list of all the tasks that you have to do on your day, tomorrow, today, and to go through that list and energetically feel into that space. Do I have energy for this task? If you don't have the energy, move on to the next one, if you can. And the more you do this practice, the more you are able to fill into your energy and to only do the things that you have the energy for and to balance out the things you don't have the energy for. Now, if you're a projector, manifester or reflector, you have inconsistent access to energy. Your energy is fluctuating. And we're not here to operate in the same way as generators. So a little bit like how I said earlier, with my energy levels, my energy levels go up and they go down. I have big dips in my energy and I can't keep up with the rest of the world. And that's completely fine. We're not here to run the same race as everyone else. This is how your energy works. You might have energy one day, but the next day you might not have the energy. And we don't recharge overnight. Throughout the day when you're with other people, you are amplifying the energy of others. So it can feel like you're on a bit of a sugar high throughout the day. It feels like you can keep up, but as soon as you get home, you realize, oh, I didn't have the energy for that. So if you're a projector, manifester or reflector, your energy operates very, very differently. You're not here to keep up with the rest of the world and you're here to put those boundaries in place to keep your energy levels okay. So how do we conserve our energy? We've got the energy that's escaping. So we know we have to put our boundaries in. We know how we could turn this around. But how do we conserve our energy? It's about listening to your energy levels and getting to know your energy levels. And if it's for you, you'd have the energy. However, here's the caveat. At the same time, if your life is already filled with all the things that you don't have the energy for, you are starting from a place which you are already depleted. So the first step in this situation is to figure out here by making those lists that I've mentioned earlier, what you have the energy for and what you don't have the energy for, and to try and rid the things that you don't have the energy for to make way for the things that you do. That doesn't mean you have to get rid of things that you have responsibility over. It's about balancing it back out. And if you can, delegating those tasks back out and restoring your energy to a place where it can accept new opportunities which are in alignment with yourself. If you are a projector, manifester, or reflector, it's really about managing your energy dips. It's about resting, having more rest within your day, and saying no. And you are the only one who can maintain your energy. So it's taking responsibility for putting those boundaries in place and feeling into those energy levels, knowing your energy operates completely differently than everyone else's. Now, in terms of recharging, the final thing that I'll be speaking about in this energy escaping call, in terms of your energy recharging, if you're a generator, your energy recharges when you go to sleep. You recharge overnight. You wake up with a full tank of energy in the morning. You are here to go to bed when you are exhausted. Now, everyone else, projectors, manifestors, and reflectors, we do not recharge overnight. So it's about going to sleep before you are exhausted, perhaps even winding down with a bedtime routine. You're trying to discharge the energy from the day because you've been soaking in and amplifying lots and lots of energy all day. So when you go to bed at night, you wind down, you discharge the energy, 
And if you still wake up feeling tired, that's completely normal. When you reach a point where you are exhausted, it does take a couple of days for you to recharge. So you might be witnessing generators around you recharging, 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 and you aren't bouncing back as quick. That's completely normal. Now, on a day-to-day -day basis, generators or projectors, manifestors, reflectors, especially for projectors, manifestors and reflectors, if you want to recharge or to keep your energy within you, you might want to lay horizontal. It changes the way that we receive our conditioning. So you might want to lay down horizontal on the sofa. You probably want to get off your phone because that is energy escaping. You might want to take a bath or read a book, whatever feels right for you. And you're going to want to remove yourself from the presence of other people just to take a moment to yourself. Okay. So energy works very differently for each of the energy types. There are many, many specifics and nuances within each individual chart. Your energy is escaping because of the boundaries that needs to be put into place. And because you are living a life which society has said that this is the way it is and it's not the way it is. The narratives that you have formed are formed around what you've heard already in the past. Our beliefs are formed off of those things that we've heard in the past. They don't always serve you moving into the future. So looking in to those narratives and rewriting those stories you're telling yourself can be super helpful to help you move forward. Once you are aware of your energy levels and you give yourself permission to operate very, very differently than everyone else, then you can start putting your boundaries in place conserving your energy and recharging i hope this was helpful i'll stop the recording and if anyone would like to ask a question i am here to answer them <laughs>